Hey, 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 hey. I hope y'all are doing good. All right, I'm just hanging out, waiting for everybody to, wait for everybody to get on. Hey there, how you doing? Hey, Rumble C. Good to see you guys. The Nana, hope to, I'm glad to see you. Good to see you. Hey, y'all, hey. What's going on? My 11-year-old, my Jude, is standing here because he got me situated. He got me set up. I am simultaneously recording this on another device so that I can try to post it because um, I get asked about this. For those of you that are joining me, let's see, there are about 900 of us on so far. I'm assuming many of you have logged in because you saw I did a little post that said we were going to talk about hair. <laughs> not theology, not Bible study, not spiritual disciplines, but hair. And that's because hair is ministry. How about that? So we're going to talk about hair. I've been asked to do it. Um, for a very long time to do a little live to just talk about hair. So I decided today, while I have on this green shirt, thank you very much, Lynn Wallace. You said that um, you like the green. I'd like to say thank you. Today I had to um, do, I loved doing a session on discerning the voice of God for an online conference, and I had the best time. So while I looked halfway decent in my good uh, shelter in place situation, I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and do this live. So. Let me give everybody a chance to hop on. Good to see you guys. Hey, from Nigeria. Hope you guys are doing good. Thank you, Carolyn. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Manda Fort. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are very kind. Hey, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just jump right in to the reason why we have all gathered together today. Um, I started having to, um, every now and then, explain some things about my hair 20 years ago when I decided that I was going to go natural. For those of you that might be um, unaware of what that means because maybe you are our uh, vanilla sisters and you don't know what it means to go natural, I'm gonna explain all of that, explain what the process was for me, what it looked like. And there are some spiritual threads that run rampant through for me and for many women of all hair types and every color and every uh, race, every hair texture, there is such a security issue that can be tied to our hair, particularly for black women in a culture that historically has not valued all of our curly headed glory. So um, we're gonna talk about all that. Okay, is everybody here? Laura, hey Laura, hey Crystal. Hey there, you watched my live session on hair previously. So that, what was that? Maybe two years ago or a year ago? So I'm glad you did. Every now and then I have a um, Saturday like today. Is today Saturday? Yeah, a Saturday like today. You know, our, our quarantine days are running together at this point. Um, but every now and then we have an opportunity, like I have an opportunity to just be on, a, on an afternoon. I'm like, I'm gonna do it today. I'm gonna do it today, the hair conversation. And then I'll leave time to answer some questions too as I'm able to do that, okay? Hey there, good to see you from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Good to see you guys. All right, I'm gonna jump in y'all and um, I could spend all, the whole time just saying hello to everybody. White girl mama with mixed hair babies. Girl, I got you, I got you. We're gonna talk about the whole situation, okay? Because it's a situation. And I appreciate you for being here because that means you acknowledge the fact that it is a situation and you need to be educated a little bit about the situation. So thank you for being here. All right, I see your questions. I'm gonna to try to answer those. All right, so let me start by telling you um, a little bit about my hair story. Um, a lot of women, women of color call it their hair story because we all know what it's like to have gone through some of the, the seasons that we've had to go through with our hair and what that has meant, the damage it sometimes has caused, not only externally, but to our self-esteem as well. And I have gone through this too, so I'm gonna share a little bit of that. Um, I got a relaxer when I was about um, 12, 13 years old. For black women, um, a rites of passage, so to speak, into womanhood was when we got to get a relaxer, when we got to get a perm. Now, for those of you who don't know, a perm for a black woman means the exact opposite of what it means for a white woman or a woman with a straight textured hair. So whereas a perm for a woman with a straight textured hair would cause it to be curly, um, for a woman like myself who, who has an Afro texture hair, what it does is it straightens the hair, but it straightens it by breaking down the hair follicle. Now I need to tell you guys, as I go into this, um, I'm just, y'all are gonna have to um, 
be patient with me because I'm a little scattered in all the things I want to uh, say. I didn't really organize a, you know, a full on message or anything like that about this. I'm just kind of randomly talking. So forgive me if I stray every now and then. Um, but I am not a hairstylist. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a chemist. I'm not any of those things. I'm just a girl who has curly textured hair and I've walked through some seasons with my hair. So just hang in there with me. And if I don't say anything, everything correctly, don't worry about it. Thank you, Natanjari Pascaline, something like that. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. So thank y'all for giving me a pass in that regard. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Justina, I think. Take, take your time. I will take my time, girl. So anyway, what a, chemical, what a chemical relaxer does for curly textured hair women is it breaks down our hair shaft to make it straight. So throughout the, the 80s, I was about to say the 70s, but really the 80s and the 90s strong, you saw a lot of African-American women with their hair straight. Most black women wore their hair straightened and the way it was straightened was by a relaxer. A relaxer has, it's a white, um, almost looks like white glue or paste and it's put on our, uh, most of you already know this, some of you may not, so be patient with me while I describe it. It's put on the roots of our hair so that as our hair grows out, we tame the new growth that grows out of our hair um, and put that chemical on it that breaks down the hair shaft. All right, this is all well and fine the first couple times you do it. But once you do this every six weeks, every eight weeks, because like clockwork, we was up in that hair salon getting our hair relaxed like clockwork. This is something that you did not miss, okay? Yes, it doesn't smell great. It actually smells like a chemical. It smells like you're putting a chemical on your hair. After it's sitting there for about 15, well, 15 minutes might be long. It's been so long since I've gotten one. I don't remember how long we would let it sit on there. Some of you may be able to uh, remind us. But after like 10 or 12, 15 minutes, it, it would literally burn your scalp. So I need you to get the picture here. For years and for decades, black women were putting um, chemicals on their hair that we knew was strong enough to actually burn our scalp. And once that was rinsed out of our hair, oftentimes we would walk out of the beauty shop. I would walk out of the beauty shop with actual literal burns on my scalp. Okay, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, go ahead and just just... Say a amen, put your hand up something because I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Your hair is, your scalp, your skin literally has burn marks on it if it's left on too long. And a lot of times that happened. These chemicals obviously were not just on our hair, but because they were, it was on our scalp. Um, we know now that those chemicals actually go into your body because you have pores on your scalp. So at the time you're doing this though, our society was so... Um, accentuating and um, highlighting the beauty of straight hair that I was willing to do it because it's just what we did. It, we tamed our hair so that it in its natural state um, was not, was, wasn't seen. We, we did everything we could to mask that. And so we would have scabs. I see somebody saying that we'd have scabs on our hair. I had scabs on my head. And over time, as you are putting these relaxers in your hair and it keeps on breaking down your hair so that it's no longer kinky and coily and ziggly and zaggy, but it's straight and flattened out. After you do that over and over and over again, it begins to damage your hair. So a lot of times, again, we've seen a lot of um, women that have curly textured hair, uh, particularly black women with short hair. We have been convinced for a long time that our hair doesn't grow, that our hair can't grow. Um, but really it was, it's a lot of it was that we were breaking it down so much and putting such harsh chemicals on it that it doesn't even have an opportunity. It doesn't even have an opportunity to, thr to thrive even if it wanted to. So I started that, my little rites of passage, getting a chemical relaxer. I started that when I was uh, about 13 years old because that was what we did. A lot of us waited until we were going into our teenage years and then our mama told us we could do it. Um, after she had been, you know, using the pressing comb all the years before on the stove, not the kind that plugged in. They didn't have all that back then. It was just you sat by the stove. Your mom turned a burner on. She put a hot pressing comb on that thing. And then she ironed out your hair. And so my mom, my sweet mom did that 
for me and my sister too for special occasions. Um, and then I got a perm and thought I was grown. Ooh, thought I was grown with that perm in my hair. Um, so I did that until I was 24 years old. And this is really where my hair story really began to change. When I was 24 years old, again, so not for the first time, but again, I was looking at my hair and it just wasn't doing well. It was breaking off. It was damaged. Um, right over here, I'll never forget, but right here in my scalp, there was a patch of hair about the size of a, um, I was about to show my age and say a silver dollar. Ain't nobody seen no silver dollar in a long time, but it wasn't a quarter size. It's a little bit bigger than that. Um, it was just broken off. It was like a circle of hair that you couldn't see because of a lot of our damage, you can't see. You know it's there. Oh, if this ain't a spiritual lesson, I don't know what is. You know it's there. Other people can't see it. So you just sort of hide it. You keep combing over the damage that is there. I know y'all, I know that there are some women here that know exactly what I'm talking about. So you just sort of keep covering up the damage. And right under here, when I was 24 years old, Again, I had a circular patch of hair that was only about um, this long. It had broken off. And at the time, I had just gotten married um, and I had just gotten on some medication. And I, um, I went to my doctor because I assumed it was the medication that I was on. And I went to this doctor. She's still my doctor to this day. She is a sweet, wonderful um woman who she and I are so close friends now. She is a white woman with straight hair. And I went to her and I said, I think the medicine you might've put me on to prepare for marriage. So you might know what, you might know what medication I'm referring to. But I said, you know, this might not be the one for me. I might not have to, I might have to get on another one because I can see something's going on with my hair. So my sweet white doctor, doctor uh, sat me down on her, um, you know, examining table there. And she searched out the spot that I was talking about, which was right over here, over my ear. She looked at, looked at it a little bit, and I remember her kind of feeling around on it. And then um, she took a couple strands of my hair elsewhere, and she pulled it. She pulled it out. She did one from here. She did one from back here. She did another one from here, and she pulled out another one even in that spot. She pulled them all out, and um, she saw that the bulb of the root was on each one of the hairs she had pulled out. So she could see that the root was fine on each of the hairs. So she said, Priscilla, I don't think that there's anything wrong with your hair. She said, I can see that they're, all, they're not breaking off. They're coming out by the root. I'm looking at your follicles, your roots, and I can see that your roots are actually strong. So she said, what that tells me is that it's not something that's going on inside of your body. It's actually something you're doing to your hair once it comes out of your body. So my sweet little innocent, um, uh, in terms of these things, hair and black women and their hair, she looked back at me and she said, um, what do you do to your hair after it comes out of your head? That's what she said. So I said to her, well, girl, I get a relaxer. But what black woman doesn't get a relaxer? This is, this is like 99, 2000, okay, the year 2000. So this is 20 years ago. I said, I get a relaxer. And she said, um, is that a chemical? I said, yeah, it's a chemical. It has lye in it, L-Y-E. It's the main ingredient. She said, hmm, it definitely is the chemical you're putting on your hair after your hair is coming out of your head. In other words, <laughs> the way God is growing the hair is fine. It's what you're doing to it after it comes out of your head. That's the problem. And, and every now and then, y'all, if you don't mind, because you know I can't help it, I got to just pause and give you a little, a little spiritual principle. Because God gives us so many, he gives us our lives. And we're the ones that damage them. And then we blame him like he did it. He's like, no, I grew the thing right. It's after I gave it to you, the relationship or the job or the ministry or the whatever. It's after I gave it to you. It's what you did after I gave it to you that actually is causing the damage that you need me now to deal with. So anyway, back to the story. Just take that, receive that if that's for you. If it ain't for you, then it ain't for you. Um, so the doctor said to me, what I need you to do is I need you to stop getting a relaxer for the next six months. Come on now. Y'all know that I had no interest 
in being obedient to that. I was looking at my sweet doctor who loves me and I love her. We're still close friends to this day. And I actually wrote about her in a book called Radiant. If you don't know about Radiant, uh, it's a book that I wrote on uh, self-esteem for women. And chapter two is all about hair, okay? Because there are so many elements of self-image and self-esteem um, that, that I wanted to write toward um, in regards to who God says that we are in our identity. And I couldn't leave out this what the Lord taught me in regards to my own hair. So chapter two is about that. And I wrote about Dr. Diane in chapter two. So if y'all are wondering, if you've read that book and you're wondering, is this that doctor? Yes, it's that doctor. So she said to me, I mean, just, you got to stop getting a relaxer for six months. Girl, I look back at her like, you done lost your whole, your whole mind if you think that I'm finna not get a relaxer. In the 90s and 2000s, early 2000s, black women weren't not getting a relaxer. That wasn't happening. That's what we did. We did it. We would sit in the beauty shop for hours on Saturday if we had to, to get it done. So, um, and, and we did sit in the beauty shop for hours, by the way. So anyway, um, I left the doctor's office that day with her, with her guidelines. Stop the relaxer for six months. Let's see if everything turns around with your hair. I left with absolutely no desire, no willingness, no intent on being obedient. I mean, I just left like, she don't know what she's talking about. And I'm not doing that. No interest in being obedient. I got in my car. I'll never forget this day. I got in my car and I started driving home. Something happened on the 25 minute drive between my house. I'm sorry, between the doctor's office and me going home. It is one of those moments that I will never forget because there are several times in my life where um, I just remember God moving in and making something as superficial and as natural as hair or some element, you know, just in regular life, making it really personal and spiritual to me. This was one of those times I was driving home and it occurred to me, and I know now this is the Holy Spirit, it occurred to me that if my doctor had said to me, I need you to stop eating fried foods because I can tell that your arteries are clogging and you, you might have a heart attack. If she would have said to me some other directive that had to do with my physical health, I would have listened. I would have said, okay, I'm gonna stop smoking or I'm gonna stop eating fried foods or I've gotta stop putting using that chemical on my skin because it's actually causing uh, something to go wrong. If she would have said to me anything else, I would have obeyed her because I trusted my doctor, still trust that doctor with my health. Why was it that I was so attached to straight hair that I was willing to continue to damage myself to get it? What was it that was so important to me about having my hair straight that I was willing to forego my actual health in order to maintain this um, standard of what had been called beautiful. I'm telling y'all, this thing hit me like a brick as I was driving home. It hit me like a brick. Am I really willing to keep on do, doing what the doctor is telling me is the problem just because I want straight hair that bad? And what's wrong with my view of my intrinsic value and beauty that I'm willing to do that? So as I drove home, this was all occurring to me on the way home. Um, the Lord was really dealing with me. I felt so convicted and challenged and I pulled off on uh, off of Highway 35 in Dallas, Texas. I pulled off on Illinois. Illinois is the exit that led to Wynwood Village. Wynwood Village is still there, but Wynwood Village used to have a African American bookstore in it called Joe Kay's Bookstore. I miss small boutique mom and pop bookstores. I really do. Um, there were great Christian bookstores and great African American bookstores. This was one of them. I drove straight to that bookstore. I asked them, "Do you have a section on black hair?" And they led me around to one little shelf, one little corner of the shelf where they had books lined up on black hair. Now, of course, here we are 20 years later, there are so many resources available to you and to me to help us manage our, um, our hair. There are so many products that were not available in 1995 or available in 2000. I'm telling you, there were probably 10 books that were available to me, not shelves and shelves of books. And that, that's a blessing that it's available now because so, so many people... Um, have seen the importance of helping, you know, us, each other to steward curly hair. Um, so um, 
I, I grabbed a few of those book off, books off the shelf. I still have them. I'm so sorry that I don't have them to show you right now. Um, but it doesn't matter because you can just now look up um, hair that you want or books that you want on natural hair. There are so many options available to you. And I, I grabbed those books and I took them straight to my mom's house. I went straight to my mom and dad's house instead of going home, okay? Because I'm having this whole, this whole internal crisis, okay? I go straight home to my mom and dad's same house they raised me in. And I grabbed my mom's photo albums. She is a prolific keeper, was a prolific keeper of photo albums. Am I taking too, too long, y'all? I hope I'm not. I'm telling y'all the whole story. I hope I'm not boring you, okay? Forgive me if I am. Hang in there with me. Um, I looked through my mom's photo albums. She um, keeps kept tons of photo albums. We have them from when we were all growing up. And I have them too. Oh, thank y'all for saying, thank y'all for saying that I'm not boring you. I appreciate that. I feel like I'm being long-winded. Um, I'm like my mom in that way. I have photo albums from all the years of my kid's life and all that. So she got the regular photo albums, you know, like our parents used to keep. Photo albums with actual pictures in them. And I grabbed the ones from when I was pre-relaxer. So like 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. I opened up these books and looked at myself. And I saw these huge, thick ponytails, huge, thick ponytails on either side of my head. And I felt my own hair, which at the time had, had a little bit of length on it, but it was real scraggly and thin and didn't have any body and didn't have any, um, excuse me, that's the doorbell. Um, it just was so thin. I could gather up all, I could gather up all of my hair in this tiny little ponytail tiny little ponytail but in my pictures it went from when i was little i had these huge ponytails like this you remember when you used to have the uh the little rubber band thingy with the balls at the top right here and then you had two little balls at the bottom of your ponytails and your ponytails would be swinging on either side and these big old thick plaits on either side of my head that's what i saw and i remember feeling my hair and i was like that's me in the picture that means i have hair I have the potential to have healthy hair, but this ain't it. I mean, it was so thin. My ponytail was completely gone. And it just started to weigh on me. Am I really going to sacrifice my own health? The health that God has given me with my hair? Am I going to sacrifice my continued health as an adult woman now because I want straight hair that bad? And I started to pray about it. And this is what I want to encourage you guys to do, too, if you're considering. It's, cause see, it's, I'm telling you my hair story, but you realize this ain't just about hair. This was the thing God used for me to help me begin to see clearly the areas of my life where I lacked a sense of significance that was rooted in him, a sense of beauty because of the beauty he's given me, the intrinsic value that he's invested in me, that I don't have to look like her or act like her or be shaped like her. This could be about your figure. This could be about your hair. Yes, this could be about your skin color, that God has created you the way you're supposed to be created. Why is it? And I know why, partially, because we live in a culture that so celebrates certain kinds of beauty, certain kinds of appearances, certain sizes, certain styles, that we slowly start to lose ourselves because we start masking our real self and acquiescing to what someone else has determined was beautiful. And, you know, for me, all throughout high school, I was a cheerleader in high school and we had one of them serious teams where we were like in national competitions. And we so we didn't just do football games and basketball games and stuff. We won like national championship cheerleading things. So you had to be not only just in uniform, kind of you had to be uniform like for real. And our hair had to be uniform. And I remember that our hair had to be in a ponytail and it had this big bow that was at the top. And it was part of the way it had to be. So for me, as a black girl coming into this system that had decided that the uniform is something that actually don't even work for me, my hair don't even fit in that barrette. But to make it fit in that barrette, I've got to now straighten it and put this chemical on it so that I just meld in a little bit more and a little bit more. And we live in a culture, not just in America, but in other cultures as well, where we don't even recognize the slow, um, progressive way that we begin to quiet our natural 
the way God made us, our natural um, inclinations. This could be even for your personality that we're talking about, that you've started to quiet your God-given personality because the, the, the construct you're in has determined that that's not good enough or that's not the way it should be. So you don't even know who you are anymore. For me, I hadn't even seen my natural hair at that point in over a decade. I didn't even know what it looked like anymore. I was looking at my mom's pictures of me with those big plaids. I hadn't seen those plaids in years. So by the time I left my mom's house and I got back to my own house, I was done. I, I cannot tell you what happened to me other than God so convicted me and challenged me and lovingly, graciously reminded me, Priscilla, the way I made you is okay. You all right. Be you, do you. And it, I felt the Holy Spirit like just whisper to me a little bit and say, if you will give me what you damaged. I, I didn't damage it. You damaged it. But here's, here's how the grace and mercy of God is so astounding. He lets us give back to him what we messed up. And then somehow in his grace and his mercy, he gives it back to us better than we had it in the first place anyway. That was what I felt sort of was the promise to me. Priscilla, if you will give me back what you damaged, I'll give it back to you. I'll give it, give it back to you in an astounding way. So I did. That was the last time I ever got a relaxer. I think I was about two weeks away from my retouch. At the time I went to see the doctors, I was about two weeks away, okay? And um, y'all know, once you start getting about two weeks to retouch date, you start feeling them roots, they coming back in, you, you anxious to go ahead and get back to the beauty salon and get all this stuff situated. And so I could see the time coming. And um, at the time, I, I was married. I was one year into my marriage. I had married my husband with straight um, hair. I think it was about chin length or so at the time. So he was used to a woman that had some hair on her head and had a relaxer. And so for those of you that are married, please don't get off this live and decide to do what I'm, what I'm telling you that I did. You need to talk to your spouse about this because you can't just jar the man. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be kind and gracious to the brother, okay? Um, but for those of you that are single, um, single and you've been considering um, the avenues that you can take, if you're considering going natural, I'll tell you what I did, but there are other ways as well that you can do it, okay? So for me, I stopped getting a relaxer. I just I never went back, that's been 21 years ago now, never went back to get a relaxer from that date. I waited about three or four months. So here's what happens. All your new growth is just growing in, growing in. Now, of course, the new growth is, is basically whatever the texture of your childhood hair is. When I say childhood, I mean past toddler stage. I mean, you're in your good eight, nine, tens, elevens. You need to look back at your pictures to see what your hair was. That is likely what it's going to be. Now, the reason why I say that part, this is the reason why I say that part is important because y'all social media is killing us in this regard. We are looking to someone else at someone else's Instagram feed whose hair we love. Their hair texture is beautiful. There's so many of them that I follow. Um, Natural 85, her name is Whitney. Um, lipstick and curls, I follow her. Um, paging Dr. Dre, I follow her. Um, Dr. Cami, there are many of them. Uh, the Growth Guru is another one of them. I follow all these incredible women who have these beautiful um, heads of hair. And I follow them mostly because they're able to do tutorials. There are people have been asking me to do tut tutorials. And I want to tell y'all, yep, there's Natural 85. She's a great, I've been following her for, she's been doing this for like 15, 16 years now. Um, so people have been asking me, will I do YouTube videos on hair? The answer is no. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I, so can I just get that out here right now? I am, I'm not doing natural hair videos. They take so much time and effort editing them, getting them all together, all that stuff. Tayani uh, Ferris, the actress, she does, she's doing some hair tutorials now. Um, so there's so many out there. Y'all don't need me to uh, contribute to that. Uh, so there are women that I admire so much, they're doing that. And if you watch them, you will find ways that you can style it, products that will work for it. But the problem is if you're looking at someone whose hair texture is different from you, 
then you start thinking when your hair grows out, it's gonna look like that girl's. And then you think that the products that work on their hair are gonna work for your hair. And it can become very, you can become very disappointed, very disillusioned. You can become very frustrated because you really actually still aren't enjoying your hair. You're trying to get your hair to do what you're seeing on her hair on your social media feed. So follow those people, celebrate those people, enjoy what they do have to teach you, but don't get wrapped up in the fact that my hair gonna do that. Cause no, her hair texture, not your hair. Honey, you a four C, she's a three C. It's not gonna work out the same on your hair as it does on hers. And that's okay. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, the 3C, 3B, 3A, 2C, 4B, there is basically a, um, somebody helped me describe it. I was gonna say rating, but it's not a rating of hair. It's just a labeling of hair texture. There are labels that go with each hair texture. Um, and so I don't even know, some people know what theirs is. I don't even really know exactly what mine is. But I will tell you that most of us that have curly hair, most of us have different textures in different parts of our hair. The hair that's on the side of my head, right over my ears on each side, is a tighter hair texture than all of the hair that goes through the middle of my head. So I have different um, different hair textures, and most people do. Curl pattern, thank you, SR Mayfield one, thank you. It is a kind of a um, labeling system for curl patterns. And so you might have one curl pattern in one part of your hair and another curl pattern in another part of your hair, and that's okay. But if you're looking at someone on Instagram and social media who has a different pattern than you, period, then you're going to be setting yourself up for um, a lot of disillusionment. So if you can get your hands on baby pictures, I'm sorry, not baby pictures, ele elementary age pictures of yourself, you will see what you're in for so that you can be prepared to enjoy what God gave you not your imagination of what you hope God's gonna give you. Nope, it is what it is. What he gave you is what you're gonna have, okay? So um, I went about four months growing out my hair, okay? So I'm getting new growth coming in. Now, when you get your new growth coming in, all right, and you still have permed or relaxed hair on the ends of your hair, so the rest of it's permed, but you've got new growth right here, you will find a couple of things happening. Number one, your new growth is dry. It is horribly hard to manage. It feels, um, it just feels, the, the only word I can think of is really, really dry. And part of the reason is because, which makes it less manageable. Part of the reason is because you've still got chemicals that are attached to your natural hair. Those chemicals, you better believe it, those chemicals are still sucking the moisture out. They're still drying your, your hair. They're still sort of in the way of your natural texture flourishing. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I did. You do not have to do this, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. After I got to about four months, I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. It felt so dry. It felt so not manageable. Your relaxed hair at that point begins to snap off. It starts breaking, which if you are growing out your natural hair, I want you to expect that. Your relaxed hair is going to start snapping off as you maybe brush it or comb it or try to style it. You're gonna see your hair start breaking off and falling away. Don't be discouraged by that, actually, because it will be discouraging. It really will be discouraging because you're gonna be looking at your hair in that sink like, Oh Lord, I'm losing all my hair. But you want to lose all of that relaxed hair. A relaxer, for those of you that don't know, is permanent. Once it's on, it's on your hair. The only way to get rid of it is to cut it off or to grow it off and to slowly, gradually be clipping the ends of your hair as it grows off over a year or two. But it can be hard to do that because styling your hair as it grows out becomes difficult to manage. This texture, along with this texture, okay? So after I got about four months out, I had about that much new growth, okay? And I cut off all of my relaxed hair. I went to get a trim. That's what I told my husband, because I think I'd convinced myself it was just gonna be a trim. Nope. If you're cutting off whatever hair you got left and it's only attached to this much new growth and you're doing what we call the big chop, the big chop is what we call it, um, then that means that you're going to cut off everything that is not relaxed. So in the year, or that is relaxed. So in the year 2000, y'all, I did the big chop, I cut off my hair. If I were organized, I'd have a picture right now to show you of uh, my hair when I cut it off. 
I will tell you, I came home and my husband was not happy. We'd only been married a year. And he was like, where is my wife? What have you done with her? Bring her back. He wasn't prepared for that. That was not fair to him. And again, I say, for those of you that are married and you're considering all this, you do need to talk to your husband and not just like throw this on him. Certainly don't tell him Priscilla said for you to go cut your hair up. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. So I cut off all that relaxed hair and I came home with about an inch of hair. So I had a little, a little TWA. Somebody that knows what a TWA is, go ahead and put that in the comments because I know y'all know what it is, but some people don't. So y'all can help me teach the class, help me teach the lesson. So if you know what a TWA is, put that there. I had a TWA and um, I will tell you how long it is because I remember. I remember that I could pull my hair and it stretched down to my first knuckle. That's how long my hair was. It went from here to here. And yes, a Caribbean beauty, you win teeny weeny Afro. Court 0619, that's what it is, girl. Yep, a teeny weeny Afro. I see you, Sassy Jazz. Yep, Joy Kirby, teeny weeny Afro, Kiki, yes. So my teeny weeny Afro went to about right here. Now, of course, it's an Afro now, so it's standing straight up to right there, all right? So I've got this much hair on my head, literally about an inch worth of Afro all over my head. So if you can picture me looking more like this, that's exactly what I look like. And um, I came home and surprise husband, boo. Um, so I will tell you that I wasn't really a short hair person. I didn't love my hair like that, but let me tell you what I did love. When I came home that day after getting it cut off was one of the scariest things I ever did. Oh, and I should back up and say, I kind of already said this, but I should back up and say, I do remember the drive there. And I remember talking to the Lord and saying, I, I, I just, are you, oh gosh, should I do this? This is a big deal. I've never had hair that short in my life. And I do remember the Holy Spirit kind of whispering to me again. He said, if you give back, if you give to me, what you've damaged, I'll give it back to you, bigger and better than what you had in the first place. I, I will never forget that, y'all. And I don't want to over-spiritualize it for you. I'm just saying this is what it was for me. So I went, got it cut off, came back home, and I had this little afro. I got um, in the shower that evening, and I let the water just run all over my head. I had never done that in my entire life. Get in the shower. Listen. Black women don't get in the shower and just let water run all over their head. Let's be clear. You know them um, rain shower nozzle heads where it's right overhead and it comes down like a big shower? Sometimes they have those in hotels. That is not a blessing to us. Anybody home? That's not a blessing. It's cute, but it don't bless us because uh, we don't want no water coming down straight on our head like that. Mm -mm. We plan wash day in advance. We need a whole, a whole day set aside when we're gonna wash our hair, okay? But on this day, for the first time, I stood in the shower and let my, my hair just be soaked, an inch of hair be soaked in all this water. And then I put conditioner in and I got out of the shower. And when I saw my hair without the chemicals attached to it. Yes, it was very liber liberating, whales, dolphin. When I saw my hair without those chemicals sucking the life out of it, I could not believe it. It was beautiful. The waves of it were beautiful. The curls, the tight curls on the side, the looser curls in the middle, all of it um, was pretty. Now I had to get over the short hair hump, but I wanted healthy hair more than I wanted natural hair. And I know for a lot of women, that's not your goal. That was my goal. That might not be your goal. I was on a healthy hair hunt and I was willing to do whatever it took to get over this hump of having patches of, that are, have an issue right here. Y'all remember the days where you got to get a protein treatment and get a treatment over here and work on this and this side is breaking off. I was tired of all that. I wanted healthy hair more than I wanted to have a hairstyle that I liked. So you've got to decide what your goal is. Your goal might still be style. There's nothing wrong with that. That means decide what style you like. And if it's going to be a little bit damaging to you to do it, nobody can question the intent of your heart. And that's really all I want to get at to you. You know whether or not you're doing it because you're trying to please other people or whether it's just the style you like. Girl, if it's a style you like, wear the style you like. That's, enjoy your life. 
But if you recognize that you're actually doing things that are damaging to you because you're trying to appease people or feel included or feel apart, that's the thing that I'm saying. We all have to watch that in every area of our life. And for me, this hair situation is what the Lord used to show me that. But he put this almost militant desire on the inside of me to have healthy hair, even if I didn't like the process that was required uh, to get there. So I see you, Junie Mosi, author. You're on a healthy hair journey. Good for you. Good for you. All right. So I'm going to tell you what I did that hopefully has helped me to have healthy, um, healthy hair because my hair has thrived um, over the past 20 years. It has. It's thrived. The main thing I have done is that I have not had chemicals in my hair for 21 years now. I don't get texturizers, I don't get relaxers, and I'll tell you, my hair is straight right now, and I'll tell you why in a second, but I don't get relaxers, nothing. I don't put no chemicals on my hair. About 10 years into having natural hair, I did get a, um, I got some color. I thought I was gonna try some color. It was a, a natural color that was supposed to be less, less harsh, and I got that color. It was just a light brown highlights. My hair was dry, brittle, it, it didn't, it, it, I could tell that, it was gonna make my hair break off some more. So I grew that off and was done with that. That's the last time I ever even tried any chemicals in my hair. I'm just letting it be. The second thing that I did that over the years helped me the most, and this is gonna be the hardest for many people who want healthy hair, but you like styling your hair in certain ways. I'm gonna tell you, this is just for me. For the first five years of having natural hair, I did not put any heat in my hair. Not a blow dryer, not a curling iron, not a hot comb, not a nothing. I didn't put any heat in my hair. I feel like I have to wait and see the uh, comments about that right there. No heat. Ooh, hashtag no heat. Somebody's taking notes. Tosh, are you taking notes, girl? Okay, so I see somebody crying about the no heat. I know, see? Yeah, I see you going like this, Brenda. Mm-hmm. No heat. So for five years, ouch, you right. For five years, I didn't put any heat in my hair. Um, after about the five-year mark, and I'll tell you the style that I did. Let me back up and tell you the styles that I did. So my hair was growing out from a very short place. Um, I used to get, at the beginning, I got either wore it just in its afro, or I got comb coils. Comb coils are when a stylist will take a comb, she puts a little gel on a small portion of your hair and she coils it around and you just have a little curl, a little coil, a little spiral. And she does those spirals all over your head. Um, to be honest, I didn't love it that much when she first did it the first week or so. It kind of was just little spirals everywhere. But then after about a week, it starts to get messy and unruly. And that meant I had an afro with little coils all over the place. I liked that. So I still had to get over the hump that the style in general wasn't my flavor. But again, I was, I was on a mission. I was okay with that. By the time I got to the six month mark, I had about three inches of hair or so. So at three inches of hair, what I could do was wash it and two strand twist sections of it, okay? So I'll tell you what that is for those of you who may not know. Now, obviously my hair's a little bit longer now and um, it's, it's straightened right this minute, so, so it's not gonna look the same. But two strand twist is basically when you take some of your hair and, whoops, sorry, can't really see well, and you just twist it around itself. So it's a two strand twist just like that, okay? You can even do this, by the way, if you are growing out your natural hair, I forgot to say that. If you don't do the big chop like me, you don't have to be as drastic if you don't want to. My sister-in-law, Kanika, she just grew out her natural hair. She just kept going and kept going and let the natural hair keep going. And she would just trim the ends as she went. So eventually the new growth takes over the, the relaxed hair and eventually you've clipped all the natural hair off at the end. So here's the trick if you're gonna grow out your natural hair. Y'all still following me, everybody all right? Um, if you're gonna grow out your natural hair, you've gotta wear styles where your hairstyle is matching your new texture, not trying to make your new texture match your relaxed hair. Now, this is a spiritual lesson too, if you think about it. You've gotta start wearing styles that match the new direction you're going. You can't, you can't keep styling your hair to match the straight stuff you're trying to get rid of, okay? 
Sarah Jakes Roberts, are you in here somewhere, sis? We having a hair conversation, girl. Okay, so you got to decide if you're going to grow out your natural hair. You got to try to find styles that are going to match the curly texture of your hair. All right. So for my sister-in-law, for example, for a lot of times that what it meant was she would wash her hair and it would be wet and she would cornrow her hair and she would let it dry in flat twists or in cornrows. OK, once it dried and she let those cornrows out, now she's got a wavy texture. So the wavy texture is matching Basically, she's matching the new direction she's going. And if that ain't a word for our whole lives, listen, I don't know what is. If you're going in a new direction, hey, Danny, my cousin from Germany, I love you. If you, oh, we've had so many conversations about natural hair, Danny and I. Um, let's see, her tag right there is D-N-C-J-Y. That's my cousin. She's um, biracial. She's a German mother. And then her black father, who's my mother's brother. And so her hair is all curly, but in Germany for the longest time, even still, it's hard to find products that are for natural hair because she lives in Europe. Hey, girl. So we've talked a lot about, about how you do natural hair when you're in Europe or you live in a part of the world like Australia. I remember being there to see if there was anybody who could do my hair. There wasn't. Nobody knew how to do natural hair there. So um, you have to figure out, as you're growing your natural hair out, you have to figure out how to do styles that are going to protect the direction you're going, okay? If you decide to keep on straightening your new growth, straightening your new growth so it keeps on matching your relaxed hair, I promise you're going to damage your new hair, which is, that's, that's contrary to your whole goal right there. So if you keep on straightening, 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 you run the risk of damaging your um, new growth. And also you're going to train your new growth to be straight. Now, for some of you, that might be, your goal might not be to wear, nat to wear natural styles. Your goal might just be not to have relaxer anymore. So if you don't mind training your natural hair under there to be straight, just know you're going to ha have a hard time doing twists. You're going to have a hard time doing curly styles because your hair will have been so conditioned to being straightened with heat, pressing combs and that sort of thing, that you're not gonna be able to have coils at the end of your hair and that sort of thing. Does that make sense, y'all? So you gotta wear protective styles that go in the direction you're headed, which means you might have to wear some styles that are not your preference, and that's what I did. For the first five years or so, um, I wore styles that weren't my preference, but they were headed in the direction that I'm going. They were supporting that. Hunter, Mariah 15, are braids healthy for your hair? By braids, I'm assuming you mean when we get braid extensions. The reality is that any kind of extension can be damaging to your hair. Mostly, the growth guru is here. I need to get you in on this live. If you hang out for a second with me, um, and, and if we have a second, I would love for you to come in here with me. Um, and I'll tell y'all who the growth guru is in just a second, because she's my friend. And she's amazing about hair. But um, where was I at? I, I, lost my, I lost my place because I got excited because my cousin and also because Whitney was in here. Um, I lost my place. So anyway, that's what happens when you get old. So anyway, um, the, the reality is that what you have to do is choose a style that's working for the direction that you're going. If you get braids, that's where we were. If you get braids and extensions, over time, that's gonna wear on your, your hair. A lot of times it has m even more to do with the person that's putting it in. If it's tight, you'll see a lot of people who don't have a hairline. That's because that hair, the, the um, braids and extensions have been pulling on their hair. Anything tight on your head is not working in your favor. Anything tight on your hair is not working in your favor. Um, anything, um, anything superficial um, that's not natural that you've added to your hair, you just run the risk if you're not careful, okay? So um, you gotta be careful. If you're gonna add things to your hair, you have to be careful. Now again, only you know what your, what your goals are. I knew what my goals were and I was determined to get there. So for some of you, again, you might decide, like my mother, my mother wanted to go natural, but she didn't necessarily want to wear twist and natural styles. So she did press her new growth out as it was growing out. She did press it because she knew that even once her relaxer was gone, she was still going to want to wear a straight style. 
So it was okay for her to press it. So you get to decide, okay? So by the time I got to about six months, my hair was about that long and I started twisting and I would twist it while it was wet, just like this all the way down. And at the time, you know, I only had about this much of it. I would twist it and I'd let it dry and all these twists over my head. And, um, and then after it was completely dry, which is kind of the key, you gotta let it completely dry, then I would let those twists out all over my head and I would have a cute little curly afro that was about this long all over my head. I wore it that way for a very long time. Then after about a year or and a half, two years, my hair started to get longer and my twists, because my hair was longer, I started making my twists smaller. So now, instead of big chunks of twists that I was gonna take out, I would have my stylist do my hair in twists again but she'd do them nice and small. And those twists would hang down all over my head as it grew out, okay? So they would be here, then as my hair got longer, my twists would be here, then my hair got longer and my twists would be here, okay? So those twists would stay in my hair for about four to six weeks at a time. All right. So for four to six weeks, I would not comb my hair, wash my hair, because it was in the twists. So for the past 15 years of ministry, a lot of people, maybe you, have even noticed that you've seen my hair in those twists a lot. And it'll be up in a ball on top of my head, and my hair is in those two strand twists all over my head. I've worn my hair like that so much for years now because it is what is called a protective style. Okay, protective styling. I just saw Simply Sinead say protective styling. You've got to figure out a style that allows you to leave your hair alone. Okay, I got kind of off track earlier, but that's one of the keys that I wanted to tell you. What can you do to have a style you enjoy while leaving your hair alone? You've got to leave your hair alone. For those of us with curly hair, combing it every day is antagonistic to the goal of growing out your hair. Brushing it every day, washing it every other day dries your hair out. As women of color with curly hair, we don't thrive by manipulating our hair every day, every week, um, day in, day out, straightening, drying, blow drying, all that stuff. It doesn't, it's not helpful to your hair. You got to find some style that again, depending upon your goals, my goal was to grow my hair out in the most healthy way. So for me, I found a style that even though at the beginning of it, it wasn't my favorite style, what it did was allow me to leave my hair alone for four weeks at a time at least. And then after about four weeks of those small twists being in my hair, I'd take the twists out and my hair would have kind of basically been molded into a wavy kind of curly style. So most of what you've seen of me over the past 15 years has been either in the twists or I took the twists out and my hair was all curly and um, I'd wear it that way for about a week. Then I'd go back, wash my hair, comb it out, condition it real good, put it back in the twists and I'm done for another four weeks. Does that make sense? So if you saw um, War Room, my hair was in a twist out. That's what it's called when you take the twists out. For those of you with, um, I'll try to save this live. Letters from the Kingdom, I see you. I'll try to save this live. Um, I see someone put moisture, moisture, moisture. Yes. What protective styling also does is help to retain the moisture that is in your hair. So the more your hair, like I rarely, I don't wear my hair out like this, and I'll tell you about this in a moment, but I don't wear my hair out like this often at all. And the reason why is because as our hair is exposed to the elements and as our hair has to be combed when it's in a style like this one, that over time, not just one month, not just two months, but over time, if you're constantly, constantly wearing your hair out and it's exposed to the elements and those sorts of things, it's going to be damaging to our curly textured hair. So I still mostly wear my hair in protective styling. I um, probably have my hair uh, straightened like this two or three times a year. Used to be just once a year. Now a little bit more, um, two or three times a year. And then um, I get it clipped off at the ends. I Every time I straighten it, which again is just two or three times a year, I'll clip it at the ends and I wear it this way for that month or so. And then I'm getting ready. In fact, in the next few weeks, next couple weeks, I'm going to have it washed again and I'm going to have it conditioned. I sit under a hair steamer to get that um, moisturizer, uh, moisture in there locked and sealed into my hair. And then it will be twisted. And all throughout this whole summer, 
My hair is going to be twisted and those twists are probably gonna be up in a knot on the top of my head or in a ponytail or whatever, but my hair is gonna be locked into each other, to itself, locked into itself as to protect it, to keep me from having to comb it every day. And um, yeah, that's the way that I wear my hair. So I, I was saying, if you've seen War Room or if you saw, um, let's see, Overcomer, my hair was in a twist out in both of those. When the, let's see, someone's asking, do I wash style my own hair or do I have a stylist? I have um, someone who does my hair, um, not because it's, uh, <laughs> not because I'm bougie, but because combing out my hair is a situation. I literally can't comb out this whole part that I can't see. It's so thick and my hair is like Velcro. So literally, if I tried to comb it out myself, I'd be ripping it out. Um, cause I can't see my stylist, my hair, uh, the person who does my hair. I had one lady that did it for about 15 years and I still see her every now and then. Then I have another sister, Whitney, who is on this live. She, she does it now. And I mean, it will take her two hours just to comb out my hair and, and she can see it from the back. So, you know, if I'm looking at the front of me, I can't see back here. It would be a disaster. So when I wash my hair, um, I have to get uh, my Kanika, my uh, sister-in-law, Kanika, too, she has done my hair for me before. And they'll get a section about like this, this big. And before they ever put a comb on it, they have to pull it apart at the roots in particular. Get it all pulled apart with their fingers before they start going, to it ginger, going through it gingerly with a comb. I'm saying that to say that, y'all, you literally, if you're going to do your own hair or you're going to have someone else do it, you got to be super patient with natural textured hair. Oh, thank you so much, Patricia Welsh. I appreciate it. Um, yes, Layla. Girl, I'm not even playing with you. It takes her two hours just for the comb out, um, particularly right here in the crown. My hair is really dense and thick. So she'll take a little section and she'll just finger through it at the roots and get that all separated. And it's like Velcro in there. She'll get it all separated. Then she slowly combs it out. Um, very, very patient, very, very slowly to make sure to not pull my hair out. If I did it myself, my hair would be torn out because I can't see well enough to separate the hair without, um, without damaging it and pulling on it. So someone's asking, what's my hair porosity? Can I tell you, I don't even know what porosity means, honey. I don't know. I think I saw on something that someone let the piece of their hair sit on some water and if it floats, then it's got porosity. And if it doesn't float, then I don't know. The growth guru might have an answer for my hair porosity. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm saying that word right. So um, let me see, where was I at? Oh, we've gone for an hour now. So y'all forgive me. Um, we're going long and oh, well, we'll be all right, right? What else we got to do? We're all sheltered in place. Um, so anyway, for basically the last 15 years, that is what I have done with my, with my hair. Thank you, growth guru, medium porosity. That's what I've done with my hair. I have put it in pro protective stylings. I've washed it, combed it out, moisturized it, and then had it styled in a protective styling. The one that I found for me was twists. So I've worn twists at every stage, whether it was this long, this long, this long, this long, or this long. I've worn it in twists most of the year. And then I take it out for a week or two, then I get it twisted back up. So you gotta find a protective style, y'all. You've gotta find some moisturizing, um, some moisturizing products that are gonna work for your hair. And really anything, thank you, Kwan Lee, anything that has natural moisturizing agents in. Um, and I'm gonna bring um, Whitney on here in a second because she's really gonna be able to speak to this more intelligently. Um, cause I'm not an expert in this. I just know my own hair. What I do know is that there are many natural products out there that can be helpful to you. I've used Karen's Body Beautiful for years. Karen with a K, Karen's Body Beautiful products. Um, I'm trying to think of, there's obviously the Curls brand is amazing. Uh, Mahisha um, has a, a wonderful brand. You can find so many options that are available to you. Those of you that are raising mixed race children, find a African-American friend of yours um, that you can really sit down and talk to. How do I get moisture in this young lady or young man's hair? Because moisture is the key for retention and moisture is sustained when you have your hair in a protective styling, when you have your child's hair in a protective style that can help retain the moisture over the long haul. 
So the reality is you do need help when you're dealing with um, uh, young children and adoptive children or you're fostering children. I appreciate those of you that have come in. Oh, Design Essentials, that's another brand that is great. Those of you keep saying the brands that you found that work well for you, we can help each other in that regard. Um, but those of you that have said, I've got mixed race children, I get a lot of comments about that. How would I advise you? I would advise you to be open to the advice of some black women in your world that can say to you, let me help you. Let them help you, okay? Because it is different than your hair. They can't, your child cannot have their hair washed every day. They have to have some real live good oils in their hair, which would be the opposite of what you, if you're um, uh, European descent, the opposite is what you need to do. You don't need to put oil in your hair. Your hair creates its own oil. Ours doesn't. So we have to put oil in our hair. Nature's Blessing is a wonderful pomade that I've used for 20 years in my hair. I use it in my boy's hair. It's fantastic. Nature's Blessing. You can find it on Amazon. Buy it in a pack of three. I love it. It smells like heaven too. And then um, the Growth Guru, she has a line of incredible products. Um, I'm going to bring her on to tell you about them. This was not, this is not a commercial for the Growth Guru, by the way. Her name's Whitney. I call her the Growth Guru because that's her Instagram handle. But um, Whitney and I did not plan this, just so you know. She happens to just be here on the live. Uh, yes, Morena, the main choice is another uh, line that is very good. But um, Whitney and I didn't plan this. I don't want you to think that this is me trying to promote, overtly promote Whitney's products. What I can tell you is that they've worked wonders for us. Um, not just me, but my sons. Um, they're fantastic. She's created them herself. So they have natural products in them. And this woman knows some hair. So I'm gonna see if I can get Whitney in here for a second. Let's see here. Whitney, okay, there you are. I'm gonna see if I can get I love her so much. She's a sweet lady, mother of three, and she knows some hair. The growth guru declined. Whitney, did you just decline? Did you do that on purpose? Are you trying to tell me that you ain't coming in my life to have a conversation with me? Oh, she said, give me a sec. <laughs> She's probably like, girl, it's too many people up in here for you to call me on without notice. Um, so anyway, I want you to find some products for you that have some um, moisture in them. And then I want you, oh, Whitney says she just got out of the shower. Okay, go ahead, get yourself together, Whitney. It's all right, get yourself together, girl. It's okay. Um, but if you guys see the growth guru here, you need to follow her because she's got lots of incredible insight um, about hair. I see Kanika, Kanika is my sister-in-law who, uh, does my hair. Sometimes she has straightened my hair. In fact, this straightening situation that I have right now, um, because I could not go to a, a salon, um, none of us could, right? We've all been doing our own hair. I knew better than to try to wash my own hair because I, like I told you guys, I wouldn't be able to really comb it out well at all. It's just my arms hurt. They're tired. I can't see back here, all that. Kanika uh, did it for me. And I think we had a record this time, right, Kanika? I think it only took you five hours <laughs> instead of seven. So I think, I think for about four or five hours, Kanika and I were together. All right, let me see while we're waiting for Whitney. And Whitney, don't feel pressure at all. Uh, hi, Tanisha, I see you. Don't feel pressure, uh, Whitney, to come in if you're busy right now, sis. I'm gonna answer some questions as I'm able. Can these tips work for a more silky, curly hair type? Yes, because really what I've given you are general tips. You have got to find, if your hair is curly, that means combing it, um, brushing it, maneuvering it is going to make it easier for it to snap. Hair textures that aren't straight like this, as we manipulate them, they snap. So if you're trying to retain hair, you still got to find some protective styles. For many people that has been, wait a minute, y'all, hold on one second. For many people that has been, um, you part wigs, um, the growth guru and others are excellent. There are some you part wigs out there, y'all, that look like your hair. And your hair is safely tucked up underneath that wig. And nobody knows that you're walking around with a you part wig on for a little while so you can protect your hair. Here's something she said to me. Somebody's asking, what's my hair type? I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask Whitney that. She might know. But um, somebody said, uh, actually Whitney said to me, 
that your hair, your own hair on your head is like a Bentley, <laughs> like the car, a Bentley. She said, if you had a Bentley and you had a Honda or a Chevrolet or something, would you drive the Bentley every day? Or would you want to protect that? And actually, would you drive the, the more functional car every day and protect the more valuable car? So, so she's right. When I thought about it, I was like, that's a great illustration. She's like, you don't wear your own hair all the time, every day, wearing it out, putting a curling iron in it all the time, brushing it, combing it. Not those of us with curly textured hair. That's going to bring damage to our hair more quickly over time. She said, every now and then, you just got to park that stuff in the garage. Leave it in the garage. Take out some other stuff that can be um, more functional and you can curl it. You can do whatever you want to do to it and it doesn't damage your hair at the same time. So we've really got to value the hair that's on our, our heads. So anybody else questions? How do you care for your hair when it's straightened? So like right now, my hair has been flat ironed. This is one of the two times this year or three times maybe that I will flat iron my hair. And honestly, I'm pretty lazy about it. I just have it like this. Um, most of the time I have it in a, in a ponytail or, you know, when I go to sleep at night, I might put it on a pineapple on top of my head and I just have it in a, have it in a ball of some sort like this. And then I go to bed. So I'm not really, I certainly am not curling it every day. I guess I need to say that. I'm not putting a flat iron in it every day. I'm not putting a curling iron in it every day. Um, we have had to do a lot of filming and online things online. So I have had to have my hair kind of done for some events um, with the whole shelter in place thing. Um, you know, everything's moved to online. So when I've had to do that, I do have some old fashioned um, hot rollers, you know, the kind that you can you plug in and they're in a little set. <laughs> and um, I will put like five hot rollers in my hair. Those sit there for a little while, I take them out. And then because my hair won't, it doesn't hold curl very well when it's straightened like this because it's kind of heavy. I have some um, not, they are, they look like flexi rods, meaning they're those long rollers, but they're cloth. So they don't hurt to sleep in, they're smushy. And I just roll my hair up in them. They have a snap at the end, I snap them and I'll go to bed with like four or five of them in my hair. And that helps it to retain the curl for the following day if I've got, you know, to do online Bible study or filming or something like that. But what I don't do is still put heat in my hair every day. I still don't do that. I don't put heat in my hair. It might be once a month that I put heat in my hair. So I just am adverse to that sort of thing. I know. I'm so sorry I don't have the pictures. I'll try to work on that. I'll get better at being um, organized. How do I handle uh, gray hair? Girl, I don't know yet. Because see, this is the only one I got. See that one right there? That's it. That's the only gray hair that I have. So I can't tell you how to handle gray hair. Um, I will ask the growth guru the question about wigs when she comes on. Uh, let's see here. How do I maintain protein and moisture balance? Do you use protein treatments? Um, I don't specifically use them anymore. I think I did use them a lot when I was getting a relaxer, but you had to because you were stripping your hair of everything with the relaxer. But now in our natural state, if we're just continuing on with um, but for love, you needed to do a rollout. Yes, girl. Um, but for those of us who um, are wearing our hair natural, if we just keep our hair moisturized, then that means that that moisture in and of itself, including deep conditioning treatments, I, I saw someone ask about that. Yes, including deep conditioning treatments. Um, I will do those when I get my hair washed. I always do a steam treatment. Steam treatment means that it's kind of like a hair dryer, and you can get one online, but it's kind of like a hair dryer that you can sit under, but it actually creates steam, okay? So I will have conditioner all over my hair, and then I just kind of pull it up just like this and kind of get it around like that and pin it all up and everything. And then um, I'll tie one of those long boot socks around my head because sometimes it starts dripping and it's hot and it hurts and blah, blah, blah. So I tie that around my head and then I sit under a steamer and the steamer just lets all that moisture soak into all of your, your hair and um, retain for a longer period of time. So I try to do a steam treatment every single time. I get my hair done. No matter what style I'm doing, I try to get a deep conditioner or steam treatment. Because remember, I'm only doing it like every six weeks, not more than that. Sometimes it's eight weeks. Um, 
one question I'll ask, and then I'm going to get Whitney in here because I see that she's ready, or one question I'll answer. Um, I do blow dry my hair one time, and that's when I get it done. So when I go get it done every six to eight weeks, wash, comb out, steam treatment or deep treatment, okay? So a good conditioner that's got lots of oils in it and you sit under a steamer so it can kind of let it absorb. And then it is combed out slowly, patiently, gotta be real patient about that. If you don't have a Denman brush, D-E-N-M-A-N, go get one on Amazon, Denman brush. Really great for helping to comb out, slowly comb out hair. Or a wet brush is another one. Kanika, let me know if I have that right. Um, but the, the wet brush is helpful as well. Mostly what you need is your patience, okay? If you can't be patient with your daughter's hair, if you can't be patient with your own, you need to get a sister-in-law or a cousin or your mama them or your aunties or a great hairdresser who can be patient with that curly textured hair. Um, and then um, it is blown out. So after my hair is combed out, then it's blown, blown out even before I put the twists in. There's several reasons for that. I'll tell you real quick, then I'll get Whitney in. The reason why I, I blow it out, the main reason I blow it out before I do twists is because when my hair is wet and dries on itself, it gets so tightly coiled in my roots that it is actually more damaging for me to let it dry on itself like that because it, it's like Velcro trying to pull it apart when it's time to redo it. It starts to lock and become like dreadlocks. Um, and so since I'm not locking it, which by the way is another great option for you if you want uh, sister locks, dreadlocks, those are options. But anyway, um, it, it literally locks on itself. So when I blow it out, that at least relaxes it enough that when I twist it, um, it will enable it not to be so um, tightly coiled upon itself, which might tear it when I have to pull it apart. Hope that makes sense. Another reason why you can blow it out once every six weeks or so is because that lets you keep your twists, the length of your twists, okay? So shrinkage is real. Did y'all know? Did you know that shrinkage is real? It's a real thing. For those of you that don't know about shrinkage, let me inform you. That shrinkage is when a woman of color washes her hair and when that water starts to drip out of her hair and her hair starts to dry, it goes from this right here to this right here. I kid you not. You could have 20 inches of hair that looks like three inches after it's wet and has dried on itself because it shrinks upon itself. So if you want your twists, for example, or your style to retain its length, that means you've got to knock the water off of it with a blow dryer so that it will already be fairly dry, at least when you put your style in place. And then that way you can retain the length instead of shrinkage sort of causing it to draw back up again. All right. I hope this has been helpful to y'all, right? Teaching you how to get closer to Jesus and keep your crowns beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I hope it's been helpful. Let me see if I can find Whitney. There's my friend. Here she comes, y'all. I think she's coming. Hold on one second. Let me see. Let me see. Yes, y'all know about the good shrinkage. Okay, Whitney, are you coming? Y'all hang tight. How often? I'm going to let Whitney answer some of these questions. I see your questions. I'm going to let Whitney answer some of them. Uh, Whitney, did I lose you? Hold on. Let's see. Let me try again. Okay, it says that we're waiting for Whitney right now. Hi, Whitney. Girl, how are you? Woo! I'm making, I'm hot because I was trying to get ready. I was like taking a shower. I hear Priscilla Shire say, yeah, I'm going to bring Whitney on. I'm in my towel like. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, girl. <laughs> it's okay. How are you? Good. I miss you. This is the longest I, like, I think I've gone. I haven't seen you. It's been a very, very, look at you. You all made it. You don't look like you sheltering in place. What's going on? 10 minutes. I'm still sweating from the shower. I was like. <laughs> Girl, you didn't have to get cute. We just doing the thing. I mean, you know. Come on now. That's the way you roll, though. <laughs> Kanika says hello. Hi. I see Hi, her Kanika. on there. Okay, let me Hi, introduce everybody. you. I'm going to introduce you, and then I just wanted you to answer a couple of questions that people have that I don't know, because, you know, I'm not a hair expert like you are, for example. This you is Whitney. 
<laughs> Whitney is the growth guru. You can follow her on Instagram. And I first learned about her. Um, Whitney, we actually found this out later. I think I told you this, Whitney. I found out about Whitney six years ago. I didn't realize it at the time that it was her, but I was on the set of War Room. And the lady who was doing our hair on War Room, and I was saying to her, you know, we're not using heat on my hair as we film this movie. Nope, you can't, you can't do all that stuff. We can twist it and we can untwist it for these shots, but that's it. And as we were just talking about hair through about the eight to 10 weeks that we were filming, one day she sent me and she tagged me on a post. She said, you know what? I think this girl um, would be great for you to follow because it seems like she's on the same vein as you in terms of taking care of hair. So at the time, I didn't even realize it was you, but I learned about you six years ago. Isn't that something? That's crazy. Like I was still doing like hair out of my house. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then all these years later, I guess it's been almost two years ago, as I was kind of trying to need to sh needing to shake up my own hair regimen, because I could tell my hair had changed some, you know, partly with just probably some damage from some little things I was trying here and there, and I needed to kind of revitalize it. And then age, you know, age has something to do with the hormones and vitamins in our body, all the stuff. And I thought of you and I and I looked you up, came to visit you. And since then, I've kind of been um, adhering to your uh, very wise plan about how you help women retain their hair and grow their hair back. So one of the main questions that people have asked is, um, well, you know what, where I want to start? I want to start by you talking about the line of products that you've created, because we were talking about products that are available to women in terms of moisture and retaining all that they need to keep their hair healthy. So tell us what you've got. So like 10 years ago, I started formulating my line of products. I went into the lab. My background is really like pharmaceutical, working with pharmaceutical um, chemists and scientists. So I kind of already understood like how that works. And then I'm also a hair nerd. So I've been like researching you know, products and, and everything. I used to be a product junkie, all that, all that stuff. So I started um, formulating like 10 years ago and it's just been like a labor, labor of love. But the problem with naturals is we don't retain moisture at all. The problem, the main problem is hydration versus moisture. So a okay. lot of people think that we need like these heavy products and we need all this stuff to like slather it on our hair, but our hair is really not retaining moisture because it's not absorbing, um, I guess, the benefits of the hydration first. And so I came up with my line, Juices and Berries um, Hair Care. We have a ton of stuff coming up. We're really about to like expand really quickly, but we sold out of like everything. Did you? Um, we just launched, yeah, we just launched. Um, January was pre-sales and then I just got the products in April. We sold out. But oh my goodness. We have, um, all this, um, all this inventory that's coming because you know, COVID and manufacturing and everything. So if you get a chance, order your stuff now because it'll ship in July, um, which is crazy. It's almost June. But anyway, hydration is key and hydration really is a mixture of like natural proteins, uh, water based products and, um, like botanicals. And so I have a line like, this is, I'm in my office, so they were like okay. sitting here. But um, these are the products, and I've actually been using this stuff on Priscilla's hair for probably like the past year. Every time I get, every time I was getting like a new formulation, I've been using it on Priscilla's hair, especially the leave-in conditioners. Um, so it smells amazing, but the key to retaining moisture is to hydrate your hair first, and then you moisturize. So what does that look when, when you, okay, help to differentiate that for someone who's like, okay, I'm just, I just do my hair at home. Could you tell yeah. me if I need to moisturize and then hydrate, what does that actually mean? Okay. So your hydration routine, what, like with my line juices and berries, we start off with a co-wash, but if your hair needs to be shampooed, we always recommend to shampoo at first. Our, I'm still launching like the shampoos and everything from the line. So you'd want to start by cleansing your hair. Um, I, I am a huge proponent of co-washing, um, which for those of you don't, that don't know, it's like washing your hair with a conditioner. It's a gentle cleanse. So this right here is what we use. And I've used this um, on Priscilla's hair as like a, a rinse kind of like after um, I've done her shampoo. Um, and this has a ton of slip. Slip is so important, as you know, because you, you say your hair is Velcro. I say your hair just really loves itself. So to get it to kind of slide apart for us, 
Um, I love products that have a ton of slip. So the co-wash is essential. Um, and you actually detangle your hair with this end and it keeps your hair from breaking off because of the slip. So the second thing, you know, I'm big on leave-in conditioners. Um, and we always do a spray leave-in. It's a liquid leave-in. This, like, replenishes the hair because I don't know where y'all are. We're in Texas, and our water's super dry. So this replenishes everything that the the hard water strips from your hair. Um, this has, um, like, quinoa in it, rice protein. Um, it has, like, amla, bergamot. And so we use this first. And then we follow with a, a secondary leave-in. This is called the quench cream. And um, I've definitely used this, both of these on Priscilla, for sure. Um, while we were like testing formulas and everything and her hair loves all this stuff. So this right here is fortifying and this pretty much starts to protect your hair from like environmental stuff. Um, and it really like, if you have curly hair, you start to see your curls kind of come alive with this, the quench cream. But everything in our line and everything I use on Priscilla is lightweight. So I, I'm not a fan of heavy hair, never been like a fan of heavy hair. Even if you have a fro, your fro should still have life and it should still bounce and move and all that stuff. So we always do this first. Um, and then moisture, you can still in moisture with an oil. Um, and we use like, we were using the Her, Her Grand Hands oil for the longest. So Someone is, said, oh, let's see, real food and drinks. She says, this sounds like a lot of work. I'm like, it is. Not. It's literally 